Yo, what is up, you two? James back here, and welcome back to another episode of VGC 2020 Back to Back Battles. Today, we're going to be using the G Max Grimstall team once again with G Max Grimstall combined with the Hitmontop, Milotic, Venusaur, Rotom Heat, and Coronite. If you haven't checked out the previous episode, highly recommend go check it out. But otherwise, a few announcements before we begin the video, as always. So, if you do enjoy these videos, be sure to leave a like down below and leave a comment down below. I know it gets annoying for me to say this, but it really does help out the video and myself. So, if you do enjoy these videos and want to help me out, those are ways you can help me out. You can also check out my Twitch channel. I will be streaming the May International Challenge, uh, which Sunday is the last day. And I will be streaming a hot fresh new run uh 45 more games and i have been streaming the international challenge previously so yeah i highly recommend go tuning in it could be a pretty wild ride that's all i'm gonna say but yeah you can check out my social medias side series wait this is in the end of the video we're just getting started so let's get started and play some games today's comments question though is going to be let me see what can i think of a common question of today because i actually don't know um we talked about music in the last common question i guess is have you ever played a musical instrument uh because yeah i actually have a big pass of music like a big pass with music uh it was a pretty big thing during my middle school and my high school days uh so let me know down below i actually played a multiple instruments throughout high school and middle school combined i think i played for band for band i think i played combined five or six different instruments yeah i, I played a lot <laughs> i played a lot of instruments back in the day for school uh we got pikachu uh, togekiss arcanine tyranitar excadrill and corviknight as our first opponent this is really weak to ground and fighting. Holy cow. Um, I wish I had either of those types on this. <laughs> oh, wait, I have him on top. But Pikachu's annoying. Yeah, Pikachu's super annoying. I do like Rotom Heat plus uh, Hit on top, as long as that's not Bold Breaker on the Tyranitar. Um... Kind of tough for the last two, though. I'm not sure. I think Corv because it's a Sun matchup and Milotic. Yeah, this is super tough. Like, Venusaur doesn't hit the Pharaoh at all, and Grimmsnarl really doesn't help either. This is kind of a weird matchup because I don't feel like I have many Pokemon that really threaten my opponent's side of the field. I have, like, tools, but, like, they're not that great, I feel like, personally. So we'll see here. I think Pikachu is going to be coming. It's going to be annoying with its G-Max move if it does decide to G-Max. Uh, we're going to see what uh, Pikachu X could do. Interesting lead. So Hitmontop's a pretty good lead here. I do have that Assault Vest on that uh, Hitmontop. So I will throw off a Intimidate. Hmm. So I can go for multiple things. I can go for uh, Dynamax with Rotom to help deal with the Pikachu because Pikachu is actually kind of a threat to my side. So I think I will go for the Max Flare in a Pikachu. It's a bad play if T-Tar comes out though, but maybe I could double it up because Max Flare should knock out the Pikachu and then Brick Brick should be redirected into the Excadrill and I like that play. Yeah, I think that's okay. We'll see. It looks like it is going to be that Sand Rush Excadrill. We didn't see Mode Breaker, I believe. So uh, we should be okay with that. Uh, Max. Just Pikachu's Max move again. I don't remember what Pikachu's Max move is, actually. But it's not going to do too much damage because of the fact that uh, I do have that Assault Vest on him on top. So we should be fine. Him on top has some pretty good special defense, too. Base 110. Oh, wow. Out of any Pokemon that decide to Dynamax, it's going to be the Excadrill. Oh, please don't be Policy. If it's weakness Policy, Excadrill, that's going to be tough. Is it Fake Out? Is it just Fake Out coming out? Wow, well, that's kind of annoying. I mean, it's not like end of the world, though. I feel like. So if it's Rockfall, it won't do too much to this Rotom. Yeah, it shouldn't do too much to this Rotom. I'll just fake out. That's fine. So I wonder if it's Sash. And Rockfall, yeah. 
So you break a sash on your Pikachu anyway. Yeah, that didn't do much at all. And I'm gonna set up the flare anyway. Oh wait, I set up the flare. That's fine. Oh, it's life orb Excadrill, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, doesn't look like it's Sash Pikachu. I don't think it is. Yeah, it's not. Okay. Okay. That's not too bad. I could flare to Excadrill next turn because I don't see anything stopping me. Time Antar comes out, but like... You should go down to him on top of Brick Break if I'm not mistaken. Unless you focus, Ash. So I will go for the uh, Max Flare here. And a Brick Break into the Tyranitar. Because I'm scared of Excadrill goes for Max Guard here. And Steel Spike is still at minus one, so it's not going to do too much. Neither is Quake. Yeah. The Quake is going to come out. That's fine. Because I'll do a ton of damage to this Excadrill. I'm not worried about policy. Oh, that still did a lot to him on top, though. Maybe I should switch out in Corviknight. Let's see. Let's see how much Flare does. Because we'll get rid of this uh, boosted Excadrill. Oh, wow. That did a lot less than I thought. Hmm. I mean, it should be fine, though. Let's see if Tyranitar is faster than him on top. It is. So, Rock Slide does come out. And... Oh, him on top survives. So, can we attack? Nice. So, we do get the Brick Break off. Okay. So, is that max speed Tyranitar? Yeah, it's max speed Sash. Okay. Makes sense. So I'm going to max here. I'm going to max guard here because uh, Rotom still has some usages. The question is, do I keep him on top or do I sack it? I need one of these Pokemon for the Pharaoh, right? Yeah, Pharaoh Horn's a threat. So I think I just go for the uh, Protect here with Rotom. And I think I just go Corviknight. Yeah, I like that play a lot, actually. Because unless he's Fire Blast on Tyranitar and goes for it immediately, we should be fine. I don't care if he Rock Falls to him on top slot, since it doesn't really get him too much. Like, the damage is not going to help him. But let's see. Rock Fall into the uh, him on top. That's pretty good. Or into the Rotom. And Assurance. Okay. I guess the only concern if he has like Fire Punch or Fire Blast. Fire Blast is a scary one. So I will say Rotom. Rotom is a pretty big factor. I'll go to Milotic because it will be able to eat up any attacks right here. And I will go for a Tailwind right away. But Tailwind doesn't allow me to outspeed Excadrill. So maybe it's better to Brave Bird. But I'm not faster than Tyranitar anyway. So I think Tailwind is fine. Let's see if it does have fire move on Tyranitar though. I feel like it should, but we'll see. My low tick will come out. Rock slide, okay. That did a lot to Corviknight. Looks like a critical hit, yeah. Which is annoying because Assurance might knock me out because of that a crit. Oh, he just went for Rock Slide again. Okay, please don't flinch. Okay, nice. We get the tailwind off. That's pretty good. Because Muddy Water should knock out Excadrill after another turn of the, uh... I feel like it does knock out even with the Spadette boost under Sun. So I'm going to Muddy Water here and go and hit on top. This allows me to get Intimidate off again. And, uh, Corona can always Roost up, which I think is important. Especially against, like, a Pokemon like Ferrothorn. So we'll bring out the Intimidate. Maybe I should caught up with my low tick, but I'm not sure. Switches out Tyranitar, which is fine. Fairfarn is revealed to be the last Pokemon. Is it, uh... That's fine. Okay. Hmm. Actually, that might not be the best option. I should have coiled. <sighs> yeah, coil was probably better. Get a critical hit on in Sun. It's not left though, it's fair, so I think it's AV. Okay. I feel like Tyranitar should come out. So I feel like the play for my opponent is to sack the Tyranitar to bring back Excadrill.
Dang, well, he had to flinch my thing earlier because this is actually kind of annoying. Alright, I think I gotta make a hard read. Yeah, I'm gonna make the hard read. Yeah, he's gonna sack. He's gonna switch that out, which is fine. Okay. I wish I coiled earlier. The muddy water didn't help. I should have coiled. Yeah, that was a bad mistake. I'll coil up this turn because maybe I'll lift Fairthorn's power whip because I'm bold and then able to get the citrus berry. So I live the Excadrill's attack afterward. I felt like it would go Tyranitar because one, it sets up the sand for Excadrill, resetting that def uh, defense. I feel like it was pretty good. Yeah, he does go for power, but misses, which is really nice. Okay. So that makes up for the uh, crit earlier on Corv. Him on top goes down, but I think that's fine. I'm actually going to go Rotom Heat and bait out an attack. Yeah, I'm going to go Rotom Heat and bait out an attack, I think. So I'm going to go Rotom Heat because it might incline my opponent to go for Rock Slide to knock out the Rotom Heat. So uh, I might have to go to Muddy... Uh, this is going to be annoying. At least I can't miss Muddy Water because of the accuracy uh, boost, but I can still flinch. I'm going to go Corviknight, though. It is my best play, I think. Uh, he might protect Excadrill, which would be a super solid play. But it is risky because I could overheat the Fairphone here. But I think my opponent might expect Protect too. But he went for Rock Slide. Okay. So if we don't flinch, we win. So let's see. I brought it to life, didn't I? I do eat the Citrus Berry. So I do get another chance even if I do flinch, I think. Because I'll live Power Whip. But I hit anyway. So now I just got to hit an overheat. So unfortunately, the end game still comes down to hitting overheat. But at least I still have... Uh, if Milotic survives the turn, I get a Hypnosis chance into Farifor. So I, I, he would have to dodge a 90% and like an 80%. Let's see. I don't think this KOs. Wow, that actually KO'd with the sand. Like Corviknight Healthy would have changed this game. Because like I could have switched... Like Corviknight would have been able to switch in a lot easier. Like, I wouldn't have had to sack Corviknight. <laughs> but it comes down to Rotom. All up to the Rotom. How many turns of sand are there left? Three. I'm actually going to protect because, like, Farifor shouldn't be able to do anything right. And, um, like, if it's not Body Press Pharaoh, let's say if it's Power Whip, Gyro Ball, Seed Bomb, Knock Off. Yeah, he's going for Knock Off. Uh, maybe with the, uh, did I intimidate this Farron actually? I did, right? With... No, I didn't actually. Oh, okay. So I think Rotom Heat definitely goes down to Sand plus uh, Knock Off. So I got to hit the Overheat. We'll see if we do. Looks like we do. Ooh, boy. That could have been... Oh, that could have been dicey. That could have been dicey. But luckily, Rotom Heat able to pull through 40 first game of today's episode. That was a long one. That was a pretty long one, but... We are able to power through, thankfully. Uh, Rotom Heat being super clutch in this uh, game here. And yeah, there wasn't really much my opponent, I think, could do. I mean, Flinch was kind of annoying. That was a really bad play, though, by me for going for Muddy Water when, like, that Pharaoh switch was kind of obvious. But I didn't know if he had Pharaoh in the back, but I probably should have assumed he had brought Pharaoh. Because it's good against my Lodic plus uh, Grimmsnarl. So yeah. I thought Excadrill was probably good against Grimmsnarl anyway. And I wasn't bringing Grimmsnarl in that matchup. It had like nothing it could really do. Uh, it being Sash Fast Tyranitar also was scary too. Luckily we didn't get uh, really flinch that game. Which was really nice. Because like flinches could have changed a bit of the outcome. But you know what? Whenever I use Sand personally, I never flinch. I actually brought Sand like to... Uh, uh, what was what was the regional? Dallas plus... um well, What was the other thing? Oceana Internets. I didn't get flinches at all really i did not <laughs> wow this is a really interesting ike with the uh deruludon or deraudon however you want to pronounce it the whimsicott pelipper dredna torko and charizard i had to process this because like i'm like what is this so a what du dual weather team which kind of clash together i wonder if it's weather ball onto charizard surprise there's no venusaur um, speaking of Venusaur, it's pretty good against everything besides the Sun mode. So, Venusaur Charizard looks like my lead because it's super strong against everything that's not that combination. So, I am going to lead that, I think. Then the last two are kind of troublesome. I kind of like him on top here. 
Um, him on top's fine. Yeah, I guess intimidate. Bullet punch for that for some stuff. I think Grimstall because I like I'm looking at my loaded. It's a good switching, but like it doesn't change much otherwise. I think. And Coronite's just not really optimal against either one of the route. I mean, it can wall the route on sort of if it doesn't have Max Lightning. But like against the Sun part of the team, yeah, I'm not liking it. I think my opponent does bring the Sun mode part for sure. I don't know if he's bringing Rain and Sun combined. That's the only issue. So we'll see. If he brings the Sun mode, I just Dynamax the... What's it called? I Dynamax the... Uh, hit on top. I mean, the Rotom Heat. Really interesting lead. What is this lead? Huh. I'm very swear scared of Torkoal switching in here. Thunderbolt or Sherry Thunder Wave? I kind of want a Thunder Wave first. I feel like Duraldon switches out into Torkoal. But it looks like it's not, unless it's a slow Duraldon, which could make sense. I'll bring out him on top. This is a really weird team. What am I supposed to expect? <laughs> no Dynamax. Okay, that's pretty cool. And it's Heat Wave, so. Won't take too much. Although Draco Mir is going to hurt. Ah, uh, he crits my Rotom too, which is bad. Oh, but I dodge, which is nice. Okay. Get a Thunder Wave off. And this lets me go for Stone Edge here. And if I connect with the Charizard, we're in a pretty good spot. And you know what? I'll switch out to Grimmsnarl. Ah, I just protect, I think, actually. Yeah. Let's see. I mean, if I if I want to risk Stone Edge, I'm gonna risk Stone Edge because Charizard's the biggest threat to my uh, obviously my uh, big big Venusaur in the back. That's for Draco. Needs to protect. Wait, is Charizard still faster than him on top? Oh yeah, because it's like minus two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I keep forgetting about the Thunder Wave. How it's fifty percent reduction in speed compared to twenty five percent in the old games. But uh, maybe I should change the him on top spread to outspeed Charizard, because that could have actually been useful. But I feel like that would take a decent amount of investment. So that's pretty good. I mean, that miss was pretty huge, but as long as I got the Thunder Wave off, but we don't know what kind of route on set this is. I don't remember if we saw the item on Charizard either. It might have been Specs. Actually, it seemed pretty weak for Specs. Dread not going to come out. Interesting. What was my opponent bringing? <laughs> I'm not really sure, but I feel like I don't need these mods anymore. I'm going to set up with Venu to win this endgame, I feel. If you go for Draco Meteor, you're going to lower your defenses, which is... I mean, lower your special attack, so the Duraldon's pretty much not really that useful. So I think that's fine for me. There's a Dynamax coming out, okay. So let's see if this is going to be... Uh, let's see what this is going to be. The Dreadnought, okay. So is it Pelipper in the back? I really thought it would be Torkoal. Let's probably go for a G-Max uh, Stone Surge here. Let's for Draco Meteor again. This is KO. Oh, it went for him on top. I'm a solid best buddy, so that's not going to KO me. What? Okay, what? That's, cho that's choice specs. You get the big Thunder Wave off. Dang, that's actually choice specs under the route on Stone Surge. Okay. Man, that's crazy. All right, so my opponent gets rocks up. I don't think that's like too big of a deal because like my opponent's going down to the uh, Venusaur at this point. So I go Venusaur plus Grimmsnarl. I think 
I just overgrow here and go for Lariat? Yeah, because I can't miss. Yeah, Venusaur has to Dynamax this game. And we'll go for the Lariat. I feel like Max Guard is super obvious, but my opponent could get paralyzed anyway on the Max Guard, so it's probably better just to go for this. I've been pretty lucky recently. Specs the route on though. How was I supposed to expect that? <laughs> That's not something you always see. <laughs> it was Pelipper. Okay. So my opponent brought Charizard with no sun. Oh my lord. Okay. So let's see. Alright. Dynamax the uh, Venusaur. But shit. Actually, I'm modest, so I... Do I outspeed the Dreadnought? Yeah, I do, since he's animate, it looks like. Overgrow, life or boosted, 100% will get the KO. Yeah. So we get rid of the Dynamax Pokemon. Grassy Terrain is up, which is nice, because I'll get a little bit of healing. And it powers up my grass moves. Specifically, I can guarantee the KO on Pelipper, I think. So yeah, Dreadnought goes down. Okay. Since my opponent didn't have Torkoal Charizard, I feel like this game, even if the Draco Meteor missed, I feel like I could have won, but yeah, it would have obviously been harder. Cause I didn't expect it to be specs on the Teraldon. But he would have been a minus two if it forced to switch out. I think I could have capitalized. Like, it sucked for my opponent 100%. But I feel like it definitely was winnable for us regardless. Lariat did a good amount of damage to the Pelipper. Teraldon comes out. Um, is that Sucker Punch range? I'm not sure. I want to Quake the Duraldon since I know it can't protect. And I feel like Sucker Punch is a play into the uh, Pelipper. Because, like, there's a chance Pelipper protects here. Because, like, if you lose Pelipper, you're in a really awkward spot. Okay, no protect. Sucker Punch. Does not got the Pelipper. Okay, that's 100% game. Because, like, Specs Duraldon can't knock me out with a crit. And you're probably Flash Cannon. Yeah. Perfect. So, Grimstar is still able to do work, even if I didn't uh, G-Max it. Did I G-Max at all in this video? I don't think I did, right? No, I didn't bring it the first game because it wasn't good in the first game. And then Max Quake finishes off the Duraldon. So, a little bit lucky here, but uh, we'll definitely take it. We'll definitely take it. That was a very scary team, for sure. For sure. <laughs> oh, man. Charizard without the raid. I wonder if it did have Winter Ball. I... You think it was Scarf? It definitely could have been Scarf on that team. It definitely was. I don't think it was Life Orb. Unless I completely missed it. Wasn't the route on Life Orb? Yeah, the route on took Life Orb chip, right? I'm pretty sure it did. So I'm guessing it was Scarf on the Charizard. That's what I assume item wise, because I don't know what else he would give it really. Charty Berry, I guess. Goggles. I don't know. But hope everyone enjoyed today's episode of VGC 2020 Backs of Battles. We end up going 2 0 in today's episode. If you did enjoy, please leave a like down below. Show us your support. Leave a comment down below as well. You can check out my other social medias and side saves on the channel. And you can also check out, again, the rental code of the team available in the description. Expires in a couple of days. The pace for the team down below. You can check out my Twitch channel. I do live stream. Again, twitch.tv slash James will be back. I will be streaming the May International Challenge uh, once again uh, tomorrow on Sunday when, that, when um, this video is coming out from. But otherwise, yeah, uh, you can check out my community discord where you can join an awesome community. Uh, interact with me and a bunch of others and have a good time and yeah i think that's pretty much it i guess if you want to go an extra mile to support my content there is my patreon page link down below but you always just support me by watching these videos and i thank you very much but otherwise yeah that's gonna be it thank you all for tuning in it's late here have a great day people and until we battle again i'll catch y'all later